Hello and welcome to this episode of Demystified as we explore home cooking in a modern world. Hello, I'm Linda and I'm here with my two friends again. I'm so excited. Hello, Paul. First his time. Hello, Joel. Hi, Linda. I'm always here. You are always here. <laughs> I'm the blowing. No, well, only lately while we've had yeah. uh, lockdown. But it's good to see you again, Joel. Thank you. It's good to see you. Good to no, see you no, really. So how you guys been this week? Not too bad. Not too bad. It's What's been a, just a lockdown in my little bunker at home week. Plugging away. I think that's what we're all doing, Joel, yes. plugging away. Yes. And you, Well, I'm not going to say what I really am thinking right now because it's not pertinent to <laughs> cooking no. with steam. But Paul's a bit... Uh, oh, bit Jesus. Of a, no. Yeah. But anyway, like that's... It's got nothing to do with cooking with steam. It's other stuff. But other than that, no, I'm, I'm good. Oh, that's yeah, good. We're, you know, putting along here, swimming, swimming okay. We're not going too much against the current. I can say that for us. For other people other that people, I am sometimes I dealing with, it's, it's like swimming against the current all the time. But anyway. Everyone's handling things differently, aren't they? Aren't they? Some smarter than others. <laughs> but anyway, let's just push on. What's happening in the kitchen this week? Well, what happened, Linda? You tell me. I was in there, but you tell me. Well, oh no, don't, no, don't turn it on to me. No, no, I'm the <laughs> wrong one to ask. No, no, I'm the one who asks questions, guys. Right. This well, is the one I was only in here for a day, but... I did get to see a pretty awesome and taste a pretty delicious one sheep chicken. Uh, yeah, the one sheeter. The one sheep chicken meal. I was going to bring that up. That would be the one thing I would have talked about yeah. and asked Paul to go through it again because I know, see, out there, listeners, when, when Paul's cooking, something he'll just do really quickly and say, oh, no, it's nothing. And John and I will be like, what? This looks amazing and it tastes amazing. And what do you mean it's nothing? Dude, I could like cook for weeks and weeks and still not get the flavours. And They're just uh, being nice to me because I know I'm grumpy. No, <laughs> no, 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 we're not. You like this all the time. What are you talking oh, about? You know, <laughs> you're right. To anybody that's really familiar with cooking with steam, when you, when you look at our photos and you, some of the, the, most of the photos that we look at, which we're all really proud of, obviously, but most of the photos tend to make you salivate a little. Well, when you actually get to taste it, and I know you would agree with me, Linda, when you actually get to taste it, it um, it tastes better than it looks, and it looks pretty bloody good all the time. So, well, no, you're just being too humble, as always, about your cooking. It was today's... I got lunch when I wasn't expecting lunch, and it was bloody delicious. What, what we wine. had, what we had, to, <laughs> I know, what we had today, listeners, was roast chicken and fried roast chicken. The veggies were little potatoes, carrot half, carrots, onion, onions. Anything else? It, like I said, simple. Simple. Yeah. All in. But the way that Paul had finished it off was, from what I understand, Paul, when I could catch you walking out after doing the dishes and walking out, going, "Oh, it's nothing. It's nothing." Whereas John and I were like, "Wow." You'd taken the chicken out to rest. Correct. And then you had the pan that the chicken and potato and everything was cooked in. Yeah. And so it had that kind of the juices from the chicken. So you put that on the stove top and cranked up the heat so that it kind of turned it all sticky just brown. Just threw it all around and... Yeah, just kind of glazed it a bit. So you didn't add anything very to the little, pan? No, I mean, the chicken had a bit of a... Uh, bit of a bath in harissa, shallots, lemon juice, vinegar, and a little bit of oil, but I didn't want to add too much oil. Um, and because I did it that way, and we cooked it on a very high percentage of steam, I knew that there would be... So the vegetables essentially weren't roasted, they were almost like braised, but to get some extra colour on them, I knew that I would have to do that, and I knew that I would have liquid in the bottom of the pan, both from the liquid that I sort of gave the chicken a bath in and uh, the chicken itself and the vegetables itself and the lemons which were in there and all that stuff. So I knew I'd have liquid in there and it's just like any other cooking liquid. 
when you reduce it, it intensifies in flavour. So because I had it in a dish, which we could just chuck straight on the stove top, which you can do with most roasting pans, um, I thought, why not? We'll just sort of, and it's more, they're not roasted, they're sort of braised and then glazed, I suppose is the best way to describe it. But it's got all the flavour that came out of the chicken from its bath, you know, everything like that was just chucked in there and it's stuck in there and then you just reduce it down so it intensifies the flavour a bit. That's all it is. It's That's all it is. Have you ever done that at home, Joel? Uh, no. Oh, well, I can tell you that I've never done that at home either. <laughs> yeah, but you've but reduced be... things on the stove oh, top. Yes. Yes. Not in that so... way, though. And it's these little things, you know, Paul, that you just take for granted because you do it all the time. Mm. And then we sit here going, wow, it might seem bleeding obvious, but it's not until it's pointed at you and you go, well, I could do that. But sometimes you have to... Mine? Just I, I, have it shown yeah, to you, yeah, you know, you like anything. Well, I, need, I need you to give me some tips on, um, you know, exactly what you're talking about. Like the, you know, shallots and lemon juice and this and that, whatever else. Well, because maybe you, know, you should I, start watching some tutorials that I've done on <laughs> cooking with Steve <laughs> website, Joel. We talk it's a lot about... www. <laughs> <laughs> we, we talk a lot about using acids as enhancers, mm. so like vinegar yeah. and lemon juice. But you've never used enhancers. the word bath before. But I know you've been brining. Yeah, so this wasn't brined. No, this was but a, this was a bath. Yeah. They're different, obviously, Joel. Yeah, well, so a bath's quicker than a brine. A brine, yeah. I have never heard you talk about giving a chicken a bath. Yeah, well, I mean, so it was like a marinade, but because it wasn't as viscous or as sticky, so it, doesn't, it didn't hold on to the chicken, which wasn't the purpose, but it had a lot of acid in it. So lemon juice and vinegar. And the spring onions. Were they in there? There was no spring onions. Oh, didn't you say spring onions? Oh, shallots, shallots. sorry. Hey, it's a Jesus. Sorry. See, this is the problem, people. (laughs) My retention. You get your S S vegetables mixed up and then it all goes to custard. Um, Hey, that's a good name for a podcast. Oh, isn't it? Uh, So, yeah, no, no, no. Um, Yeah, so I kind of used the term bath because it wasn't, sitting in that marinade for very long and it was a lot wetter for want of a better term so it wasn't holding on to the chicken but I kind of wanted that because I knew that when it went in the oven it would help flavour the chicken uh, of course if I had it done it if I had it planned it yes I could have done that in the fridge for a few hours um, but what I wanted it to do was more flavour the vegetables so I wanted a bit of the best of both worlds so a bath for me is much more liquid and viscous versus a marinade versus a brine versus I don't know what else. But a brine is a different, a totally different. Well, I did have that scenario. I did have a taste of that, and that was amazing. And I hope you do a tutorial for us soon on that. The brine chicken. The brine chicken yeah. was absolutely amazing. It's a big process. It is. You've got it's to be the, really committed. Pretty, it's pretty three simple. days of watching your chicken, but well, that's three days of drying it. Yeah. But it's a day of... It's a four-day. It's a four-day process. But I can say for anyone who does think about brining a chicken, it's worth it at the end. Yeah. It's the best chicken I've had in a long Spectacular. time. Spectacular. In ways that I can't verbalise, I can't elucidate very well. That's a big word. What I does know that mean, Joel? <laughs> <laughs> hallucinate? Project- I know that one. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Expressing, projecting her expression. But but today, so when I, when you say bath, I'm picturing like a big vessel with the chicken in it submerged and the vegetables floating around. But that's not what you mean, is no, it? No, not at all. That would be braising something when okay. it's totally covered, and then you cook it in a liquid. Yeah, so that's, that's more like a braise. But even just getting the flavours in there, so a bath is not. It's just liquid Look, at the bottom. It's probably okay. The, Stop taking everything so literally, Jesus. I'm an accountant. Well, I, again, like, I can't not take it literally. Yeah, so, well, yeah, okay, bath. It was a marinade. There we go. Okay. Does that help? <laughs> a thin, watery. Well, anyway, it was bloody delicious. Yeah. Marinade. So thank you for lunch. No worries. <laughs> Moving on. What else is happening? Got some videos coming, I think. I've yes. just done the recipe, so we've got a little um, little steamed barramundi number, but I actually steamed it in brown butter. Oh, yum. So that's not so much using the steamer. Well, it's not 
steamed fish, but it's kind of using the steam oven to keep the butter just at a warm temperature, so it's almost like poached. There you go. Linda, poached. I do know what that means. <laughs> um, so, yeah, a little bit different. Pretty simple. It's like a um, real sort of cheats fish curry because there's uh, sort of those curry-type flavours in there, coriander, cumin, chilli, garlic, ginger. You had me at curry. Yeah, it's not a curry. No. Um, okay. But then we did some, with that little nice, simple silver beet number with coconut cream and stuff like that, same, very similar flavour profiles. So is it a steam dish entirely? Well, we use the steam oven because we like to cook our fish at a lower temperature. So it's set steam poached. There we go. No, and I did have, I did try that. Sorry, Joel, you weren't here. I got it. It was yum. <laughs> so that'll be out, I don't know. In the next few days, I would imagine, and then the chicken recipe and the Turkish bread recipe. I've just done the video for that. Oh, that was good. Turkish bread's awesome. Yeah, so we'll, and that's a really so good coming. one, actually. That's a really mm. simple one. Mm. So, got a massive thumbs up from all of my family. Yeah, and you're that way. You're not worrying too much about developing a super, super crust because Turkish bread isn't crusty like that. So, mm. it's just a very simple, pretty easy. Anyone can do it, Linda. <laughs> why are you looking at me when you say that? Joel doesn't have a coffee steam oven, that's why. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sore point. Sore point. When you renovate your house. <laughs> buy it. In fact, buy another one. It'd be easier. Yeah, I think so. Come yes. on, cat slotto gods. Shine on me. Well, I've been mm. looking at uh, the book, guys, and getting demystified. We've been trying to get demystified up onto a platform that we can sell it overseas. For our United States, Canada, and UK listeners, particularly because postage from here to anywhere is just horrendous. It's crazy. But um, the format we have our book in at the well, moment. Everyone blames slightly, us. I don't know. Blame, it's not our fault. It's yeah. Australia Post. We actually yeah. take. If people don't realise. It's a we, monopoly. We actually even take a hit on postage. Yes, we do. As it is. Yeah. But for international postage, it's just it's yeah. just daylight like robbery from our monopoly. Yeah. It is. It's crazy. We we actually sold a book to Ireland the other day. We had a customer from Ireland ordered one from us. I can't. I think we sold we've sold to Ireland before, but not it's maybe almost really cheaper. in the early days. It was crazy. It's almost cheaper for me to take it over there directly. Like seriously, it's it would have been interesting to see would've... how you're going to do that right now. Well, It'd no, we can't. Man. It'd be cheaper <laughs> I know, we to can't, buy man. a bloody plot of land, grow a tree, mill it, <laughs> produce the paper, <laughs> print the, the book, print it out, print the book on that paper. Now that's taking a little part. Right? Well, it's nearly. It's but probably it feels on par. that way. But it's probably on par. But we are trying to work out a platform of just maybe trying to change slightly the size of demystified. So that we can have it printed overseas for overseas supply. It's okay for here, but book two might have to be framed slightly differently, Joel, mm -hmm. from what we've been planning on. Yep, sort of. It's more investigation. It does, but we're working on it. We are yep. always working on these these little things. It takes a while. People can't quite understand why it takes a while, but it does take a while. It does. Research well. Okay. So we'll speaking of, speaking of buying plots and stuff, a little tidbit for you. Do you know that you can actually buy like a, a deed to a plot in Scotland or Ireland or somewhere like that, and like you can, it costs you like forty bucks. Yeah, I bought. But I, when you've got that, you are a, you can be a lord, like yeah, legally. I, yeah, I bought one for my old man. Did you? Yeah. Ah. So it's on one of the most because he's a mad fly or was a mad fly fisherman. Uh, so it was on one of the, yeah, here's the funny part of the story though. Like, yeah, it's on one of the greatest trout streams in northern bloody England or Ireland or where it's Scotland. Uh, I was like, oh yeah, that's cool. Da -da -da -da. So I'm like, yeah, that's a really good, interesting gift. So he was like Lord Peter, you know, had his own yep. plot of land, gave you a full like Google Maps thing of where it was and you get a certificate and you're the Lord of that plot of land and da da da. So then it was like, Okay, that's cool. Gave it to him. Done it. Did a little bit more searching. Do you know where it was? Where the Lockerbie plane crash was. Because, <laughs> like, seriously, who's going to live there? Like, so, yeah. But, yeah, no, I knew that. Yeah. yeah. So did that pass down to you? And you're going to pass it on to... I don't know, actually. Young so if your old man's a lord, yeah. Was it, yeah, is, it was do a you lord. pick anything up just by entitlement in terms of... 
I need to find that. Maybe you two need to address me differently now. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> Rather yeah, that, than peanut. Oh, that's maybe, <laughs> <laughs> but and that's the nice one we're using for the yeah, podcast. Yes. <laughs> um, I don't know, I'll have to look that up, Joel. Yeah. You might have to start calling I never me knew, sir. I never knew you could even do it now. I God, I, must, I think I was doing something and it's like they're like post two... on our Facebook page or something, some rubbish popped up in front of me. I thought, actually this looks interesting. I want to read about this. Yeah, they're like two point one meters square. Yeah. Plot of land. Yeah. I need to find that certificate. You do? Yeah. You mm-hmm. need to make sure you might okay. need to go visit it one day when we can Build a fly house on it. <laughs> out of the country. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I can go fishing there because it's my land. Yeah. So even if it's private river or Crown River and you well, know. I actually have a, a Scottish you connection. Just can't cast very far, <laughs> <laughs> or very far. I've got a Scottish connection who's currently living in Germany, and he might be able to go and sort it out for you. I'm sure James I think will I, have it. I think I'll be able to do it from here. Oh, well, yeah. Well, what is James doing? Well, James, what are you doing? He's listening to our podcast. Yeah, that's, what we're doing. that's what he's doing. <laughs> he he will be enjoying the fact that he got a mention. <laughs> I hope he does. Yeah. Well, thanks for that, guys. Another no busy worries. week, but thank not you. much for us, Joel. But uh, yeah, it's but all right. you, there's Paul. some of us that do the work around here. That's exactly how it should be, <laughs> fellas. <laughs> and that'll be Sir from now on too. Oh <laughs> dear, oh dear, Joel. You had to bring it up, didn't you? Oh, you just had to. Okay, take care, guys. Bye. See you, simple See folk. Ya. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to this podcast as we explore home cooking in a modern world. We'd love you to subscribe and for more information, please go to our website, cookingwithsteam.com.